In the last video, we talked about your front-end architecture of your sales application. But now let's take a look at Parasales.js specifically and try to understand what this is, what problem it's solving, and how we can use it to create front-end interactivity for our web applications. So we'll pop into the actual Parasales.js file itself. And that's under Assets, Dependencies, Parasales.js. Go ahead and open that in your editor. And you'll see it's got a bunch of stuff in it, and we don't need to actually look at the implementation too much. But basically, it's just a little wrapper around Vue.js. And specifically, it's giving us some structure for how we attach view instances to a particular page. Um, and that's mainly for server rendered views. If you're doing uh, client side views, which we're going to actually do a little bit of that in subsequent videos once we start building out the features of the app uh, that are new we're going to use what we call virtual pages. And virtual pages are basically another word for client-side routing, but specifically the idea that you know, if you go to a URL, maybe it has a hash in front of it, you know, a pound sign if you're in the US, uh, or maybe it's just straight up a URL that looks completely normal and we're using uh, the newer HTML5 history mode. You end up doing the actual page navigation on the front end. So that's also a possibility, but for now we're going to stick with server rendered views. So let's look at an example of a Parasails powered page script. So under Assets, JS, and then Pages, you'll see that for every view and every view action, there is a, a .page.js file. So let's take a look at a really simple one for the home page. So you can see here that it does parasales.register page. Parasales is a global that's just exposed in the same way that like jQuery or IO in sales IOJS is exposed as a global. And the first argument here to re the register page method is the name of the page, so home page. Now this is important. This string here has to match in your views folder under pages, homepage.ejs. It has to match this ID. So whatever ID of the, the div right, that you're going to use as your page is, that ID has to match this here. So if we were going to add a new page, and this is just purely a convention, right? the file names. But if we were going to add a new page, we might name it foo.page.js here in the JS pages folder. And then in the views folder at the top level, under views pages, we would add foo.ejs. So there's three main things inside of the actual Paracels view script. And these correspond one-to-one -one with stuff you can do already in view.js. And just to pull up what I'm talking about there, in case you aren't familiar with it, Vue.js is a front-end framework, much like React or Angular, that lets you build front-end logic without getting in your way too much. So data here, this is just like you would pass in to view. It's the initial data or the initial state for your page. And here you can see that all we have is this hero site head, uh, set thing. And that's just a Boolean that's indicating whether we've set the height for the hero image section. And that's to, we're doing that dynamically just purely because we want to make it uh, responsive. Then there's this lifecycle section. And you'll see that most of the page scripts that we work with in this app will have this or these two lines of code. And this just attaches any initial data from the server, um, from sales locals. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Then uh, mounted, this runs after the page actually loads, and specifically after the page scripts has finished uh, getting attached to the DOM. So here, we're actually calling one of our own methods, set hero height. And you can see it's prefixed with an underscore. And that's because it's not actually tied to any particular DOM event. This is just for us, right? We're using this as a way to avoid dumping all of this code into here. So set hero height, you can see it's using some jQuery. And one of the great things about Vue is that when you want to just use kind of some arbitrary jQuery code, you can just start writing it in line, and it works. So set hero height, we uh, locate this full page hero uh, 
element, and then we set its outer height using jQuery, or we set the page header's outer height using jQuery, I should say. We uh, then change the min height of that hero section to be, after a little bit of math, an appropriate amount of pixels to look good in the browser. And then we set this hero height set thing to true. The click hero button, this is uh, an event really, an event handler. And you can see it doesn't start with an underscore. So what that means by convention here is that it's always gonna be the name of some actual DOM event, this first word. So in this case, click. So we know just by looking at this code without even having to look at the HTML or understand the page, we know that, hey, this handles a click event, right? This is, this is just a click. So whenever this gets clicked, this hero button, this code runs. And this code scrolls to the get started section. And again, we just use some jQuery. So just to show that happening, when you click dive in, it scrolls you down. So pretty simple stuff. These are exactly the same as the methods that you would normally use in Vue.js, but it's just kind of a locked down way to think about it. And it's a way that you don't have to, if you work with more than one person on your project, you don't have to kind of come up with your own mechanism for structuring this stuff. You can share it together and really make it more of a framework. So let's take another look at a page. In this case, this is faq.page.js. You can see this one has like basically nothing in it. Uh, it's just the boilerplate. So if you were gonna make a new page from scratch, it would look something kind of like this. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the styles again. We looked at faq.less in the last video. You can see it's also tied to this faq ID. And once again, that's just purely convention. If I open up the faq.ejs page, you can see that there it is, ID faq. And actually, if I'm in my, my quick switcher here and I type faq, you can see I actually have all of the different things related to the faq available immediately for me. And that's one of the reasons why we name things in the same way like this, because that way you know with one, basically one uh, press of the keyboard where all these files that are related are. And that's instead of naming it stuff like index.js, even if it's in a folder with the right name, it can make it a little bit harder to pick out in that situation. All right, now let's take another look at what you can do with Paracels.js. So besides page scripts, you have a, two other kind of top level concepts. One is utilities. So under the utilities folder in your app, if you open it up and then open up is valid email address, you'll see this file. And you can see the first relevant line of code here is parasales.register utility. Now this works almost exactly the same as parasales.register page, except that instead of a page script, we're talking about a utility function. And we're gonna name it is valid email address. Now what this actually does doesn't matter a whole lot right now, but what matters is that this uh, utility is gonna be used from other places in your code. So let's take a look at how we might do that. And the easiest way to find something like this is just to copy it and then grep for that word. And you can see that we're actually only using it in one place right now, and that's the sign up page script. And the way we use it here is we call parasales.require is valid email address. Now under the covers, this isn't using any fancy transpilation or any kind of uh, module system. It's just sticking it on the global, the window global. And there's uh, arguments for and against this, but in this app and by default, this is how we have it set up. The nice thing about this is that no matter uh, what the winds of change dictate that you need to do next as far as Webpack or Brunch or Gulp or Grunt or something completely different, this is always gonna work. All right, now one other thing to look at with Paracels is this components folder. And you can see that there's three built in by default. And these are three of the most useful components that our team has found uh, to kind of be generic enough to include. So one is a modal component, and this is for uh, modal windows or pop-up windows, basically. Um, and this is great for stuff like confirming whether you want to delete something or uh, you know, even just editing uh, a record. Let's say you have a table of users and you want to be able to edit one user. A modal is a great way to solve that problem. 
Now, I'm not gonna go over the details of how to use Vue.js with Vue components yet. We're gonna show that in practice in the coming videos. But for now, just know that you have a modal component built into your app by default. Also, there's an Ajax form component and an Ajax button component. Now, Ajax form it has a lot more going on, and I think the best way to show that is gonna be in practice. But Ajax button is pretty simple. We can go ahead and explain how it's set up. If you open up Ajax button in your text editor, you'll see that it has exactly the same kind of setup as the previous Paracels methods, except this time it's Paracels.register component. The name of this component is Ajax button, and then here's its definition. So first things first, we have props. And props are basically things that you can pass into your view component uh, to make it dynamic. Initial state is almost exactly the same as with a page script, except this time we're declaring this function and then returning a dictionary, a plain JavaScript object. Um, this is just an arbitrary thing built into view, and you have to do it this way for components. Then here's some HTML, and you can see here we're using the you know, ES6, ES8, whatever, uh, backtick notation, just to include some HTML in line. We could have also used JST templates to do this, but especially since we want to make this portable, this is the kind of easiest way. Then in the lifecycle section, you can see before mount again and mounted. And you can also see before destroy. Now before destroy is here because components are designed to come in and out of the page. So normally while you might want to do something when the component actually loads, before destroy lets you run some code when the component actually goes away, or before it goes away specifically. And then finally, you have your methods again. And for Ajax button, there really aren't any methods. All it is is a button with a loading spinner. So that's it for components. Let's take one more look at a page script, though, and we'll go to our home page. So open this in your text editor and go to the mounted function and write some code and see if you can get it to run in the browser. I'm going to do it here with you. So for now, I'll just do a console.log and hello world. And you can see I didn't have to actually kill the server to make this happen. This is a front-end change. So in the background as we're working, Sales is watching for changes to our files. And then if it notices any, it runs some code to basically recompile our assets so that we can see this live in the browser. And you can see there it says, hello world. So that works. If you saw something different, let me know in this, the comments. So next, let's actually try to go to our click hero button and make it do a little something extra too. We'll add a console.log and we'll say clicked. So back over here, refresh the page, scroll down to the, or scroll up rather, to the dive in section and you can see it says clicked. So that's it for Paracels.js. I hope that you thought it was helpful and if, especially if you're a Vue.js user, I'd love to hear what you think about it. In the next video, we're going to go into more of the backend again, and we're going to talk about how authentication and login work in this app. <laughs>